Good morning, Oklahoma. Welcome to Cow Calf Corner. This week, our topic is going to relate back to last week's. We talked about the three objectives of a breeding season with beef cattle last week. The second objective that we talk about this week is how do we get cows mated to bulls with as much genetic potential to enhance the profit potential of that next calf crop as possible. As we think about modern genetic prediction, the technology that's available to us, we're going to, in most sire summaries, we're going to be taking a look at 20-some genetic predictors for a variety of traits. There's multiple genetic predictors of calving ease. We have several EPDs that predict some aspect of maternal performance or another. And we have had for about 30 years a, a pretty significant amount of genetic prediction for things that impact carcass trait, like marbling, ribeye size, fat thickness, and carcass weight. With all those genetic predictors out there, many of them, and in some cases all of them, are going to be important in the lifetime of a particular calf. But only a handful of them, more than likely, are going to be economically significant to you based on answering several questions. First question we get into, in your own operation, when do you plan to market your calf crop? Are you an operation that markets calves at weaning, uh, operation that runs stockers and markets your cattle as yearlings? Answering questions like that is going to dictate which traits are more economically relevant for you. It's also important to think about, are you going to be using bulls that you intend to keep replacement heifers out of that next calf crop to become cows in your operation? Answering what our intended use of and when we intend to market that calf crop becomes very important. It's also important to think about our own economic considerations, what kind of management input are we capable of providing. Those fixed resources, economic situations, the amount of management we can put in all have an impact on what kind of genetics we need to invest in. In addition to all those EPDs that get reported, most sire summaries are also going to be publishing what we refer to as bioeconomic indices. And when we talk about a bioeconomic index, what are we getting at? It is several EPDs lumped together with an economic weighting assigned to them that enables us to have an idea of how much money we should make or lose on a given calf crop if we intend to retain ownership all the way through finishing and sell those cattle on a carcass value basis. As I always say, there's a lot of layers to this onion. You need to look at your own individual operation and think about the unique things that are going on in it. It's going to help you to identify one or just a few of the traits that are of primary economic importance to your operation and spend your bull buying dollar accordingly. Next week and in weeks to come, we're going to get more specific in addressing what EPDs do we look at if calving ease is a selection criteria, what EPDs do we look at relative to growth and potential carcass merit, and what type of EPDs actually fall under that maternal heading. Look forward to visiting with you then.